Welcome back to Marbella Now. My name is Nicole King. And to be sure, to be sure, today is St. Patrick's Day. And what better way to celebrate it than having one of the most famous Irish lasses here on the coast, the Naughty Spearing. Welcome back to the programme. Well, thank you so much for such a warm welcome. I know I was that famous, but thank you. Oh, I kind of think you Can you, you understand are. my Irish accent, Nicole? I can, I can. You I can. have to tune in. Yes. To, like, sometimes if you catch me off guard, but yeah. it's such a beautiful accent. You uh, make thank you. Ireland um, seem so appealing. Oh, thank you. I have you. to say, we're very lucky with our Irish community. We have a big, strong, happy Irish community. We do, we do. But you know, I've actually lived in Mobile 20 years now, but as you can see, I haven't lost the Irish accent or the sense of humour. Well, I mean, how can you? You've got the fabulous Hogan Sound in San Pedro yes. celebrating St. Patrick's Day. Absolutely. And then also the Cladder in Marbella. And then we have McNulty's and says we have a strong yes. and they're very interactive with the community as are you yes yes well in fairness i think there's irish bars in every single corner of the world so i think everywhere you go we'll always find a good fun irish bar that sells nice, nice juicy guinness you've brought your um son up here yes how old was he was he born here yeah. how old was he when you got here sure he he was born here he was born i know and, and he's 17 now 17 but unbelievable. He, yeah, unbelievable but he was born in the Costa del Sol hospital so he grew up learning Spanish and English obviously and um, he's great and we've, we've had a great it's a nice place to bring up children when they're younger I think a little bit more difficult when they're in the teenage years you know as we know you being so involved with sports coaching which you are getting people fit I think the conversations we've had under yeah. dire circumstances with the kids that don't have a direction sure. in Marbella and get lost in those teen years of where to do or who to look to for support, that with your son, sports was a big saving factor. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he played basketball and he did a bit of like training in the gym and a bit of boxing and stuff like that. And I think when kids, even myself, you know, living in Dublin, I grew up in an area that wasn't very privileged myself, actually, quite a poor area. And sports really helped me to get out of situations. So I played netball for the Republic of Ireland. So I represented my country Very cool. under 16 all the way up. And also I was an All-Ireland Gymnastic Champion. So I think especially for children, whether they're in a privileged or non-privileged situations, sport is a fantastic way to put their energy there. Let them get rid of their stress, burn off anything that doesn't kind of stir up them and enjoy and make new friends. So sport's fantastic, yes. You were very involved when we had some tragic, and I'm going to go there, loss yeah. of young life. It's not yes. something, unfortunately, that's infrequent to our community, and they're not necessarily on the poverty line. Sometimes mm, yes. they're in very good, privileged situations, privileged situations yeah. good schools. How can we help? I know you were contacting the Samaritans. We were looking at ways of, yes. to provide a better infrastructure for our teens. Do you think we've come any distance it's very difficult isn't Nicole, it with such a disjointed community well especially during covid times because as we know the kids haven't even been in school so the private schools we have along the coast some of the, those children have mental health problems just because they come from a wealthy family financially doesn't mean that there's not issues at home they still have issues they just have issues with money you know and um, so bless i think and when we have tragic situations like that, at least with school, they have teachers and they have friends and they have extracurricular activities that they can have to play sport. So when they have no school for a year, it's been almost a year, I think that really increases. So I think the problem is probably going to be worse now, actually, because a lot of teenagers are now doing school online. They're just Zoom calling. And I think kids are used to having the interaction of being together, having their friends around, playing in the playground, playing football during their school break and stuff like that. And when they haven't got that and they're just sitting in their bedroom staring at a computer screen from six, seven hours a day, trying to do homework and maybe not having support at home because mum and dad don't understand the maths or the algebra or whatever. They're, it makes it very subject. difficult. It's very, very stressful. Very difficult. Very challenging. So I think it probably, my, I think it's kind of got worse, I would say. So we obviously definitely need to all be alerted to this. 
and really be yeah. watchful of our kids and any change in their habits and how they eat, their moods. Because obviously, and not just kids, adults as well, if you feel <laughs> that you need help, do reach out. There are people, for example, Collective Calling. I mm. mean, you've been so active. We've had yeah. you on camera in your house, receiving all the packages, making all the food parcels, collecting the food, distributing the food. It's been a very intense year for a lot of people, more so for those who are getting involved. Or maybe, no, maybe it's a release to actually do something yeah. during this situation. How has it been, all this process of getting you, all this together? You know, th th thanks, Nicole, for, for bringing it up. It's been, it's been amazing and challenging at the same time in that I think when, when you want to help people, it feels good to help people. So it's great to do charity and obviously to help to help people who are you know, less fortunate than ourselves, who basically don't have any food. Um, and, but, but also it's heart-wrenching because when you get the list, I mean, you were there in my house that day and the food all comes and we make the packages up and we have a list of all the families. So when you see, I won't give the names because obviously it's confidential, but well, let's say you have Nicole King. I know you're not on the list, but Nicole King, family of three, your address, you know, needs meat, needs milk, you know, needs, it becomes very personal. And then you realize that these, some of the families have six month old baby, needs baby formula, needs nappies. If it's possible, can we have them a cot? And you see that this list of real people. And then when you put all the stuff in your car and you actually go and deliver to these people, you meet, the, you meet the lady in the street that has the baby in the buggy who's so grateful to receive the, the food donation. So a big thank you to everyone who actually volunteers for Collective Calling because obviously it's a volunteer. and It's a paid. major setup. I mean, just it's, receiving yeah, donations, they have to be processed, labelled, administered yes. in, know what you've got, know how to distribute it, making mm -hmm. the pack. I mean, there's so much involved. It's a lot, but you know, Gemma and Paul are their founders and they're fantastic. They're my neighbours, as you know. They live four doors down from me and they do an amazing job. And we're very lucky that we have about 70 volunteers actually came forward during the pandemic to help. So we had drivers, we had people who were fantastic on administration with the computer because it's, it takes a lot to organise where people live. And because um, it was locked down and nobody was allowed on the streets and people couldn't come and collect the food, we actually had to go and deliver the food to these people's doors. And they could have been in the park. It can be a bit scary sometimes as well, though. No, if you're going out it can to be the unknown, bit, you don't really know who's asking. You really don't. No, you really don't. But I think you, in these sort of situations, you have to trust that you're doing a good thing and that you'll be divinely protected, that you're doing good. And most people that are on the list, we have their NIE number, we have their address, we have their phone number. So it's kind of safe, you know, really. But there's a lot of homeless people as well, actually, who've been on the list before COVID who are still on the list and they live in derelict buildings very near here and when we go to them they live in places that have no electricity no water and they rely on food that we give them to eat um, one or two of them have cooking facilities they have little tiny little buns and like things you can get from the from the shiny shops or whatever and uh, they can cook but mostly we have to give them sandwiches and salads and fruit and stuff that's just easily edible because they haven't got a kitchen facilities so it's really getting involved with the receivers of these things, it's not just handing out willy-nilly, you're taking it very conscientiously Absolutely. to give the right people what they can actually use, Absolutely. which is infrequent. Of course, and then when you meet the people, you know, if I'm delivering the food, I always make 20 minutes or half an hour for each person because you want to, don't want to treat them as a number or these people have dignity and they, they want to have respect. So it's always nice to have the time. Say, how are you? What's happening? How was your children? You know, how is your animals? Do you need dog food? Is there anything in particular that you need? Um, what's happened? And they always open their heart because they're so grateful for the food that they tend to open up their emotions and tell you the reason why they've lost their job or why their water bill was cut off or what's happened and why they haven't got any money. And it's usually at the moment because of their COVID restrictions. A lot of them were waitresses or maybe cleaning ladies or working in local businesses. And obviously there was no work. So after two or three months, everyone's savings was gone. So people were struggling, you know. So when you touch people's heart and you really open up, it becomes quite you know, compassion, a lot of compassion for, for everybody, you know. So hopefully things change for the better soon. It was really nice that you made that mention of to the people who are most in need at the moment because we frequently think of lazy people, homeless yes. people, and it's not the case. Now mm -hmm. we have, I know so many mm -hmm. people, I hate to say so many, but so many, they're yeah. either squatting in houses that aren't there and they're mm -hmm. living because they have worked in 
the hotel industry, yeah. everything's closed. I mean, we really don't know what's going to happen. We need to look out for each other as best we can. Yes. I, mean, I think, I mean, on a positive note, it kind of looks like, I'm being positive, things will hopefully open up soon with municipalities opening and times, you know, and I saw that some of the concerts are being advertised for Starlight in June, which I bought tickets for. So it's, it's nice to see that hopefully things will start opening up and tourists will start to come and businesses will start to flourish because most of the people were helping, even if they were working, like I said, if they get a man and a woman who's a waitress and they say a cleaning lady, if they miss a salary for two or three months, they haven't got any money to pay their rent, their electricity, their water, to buy food for their children. They're going children. to be on catch-up for quite a while. If they're going to be on catch-up, yeah, that's why, you know, hopefully things will start opening up for everybody. And it's nice, but there is people there to help. There are people there to help. Yes. And it's very important that pride and ego get put aside because yes. no one wants to ask for help. I mean, most of us are proud. Mm -hmm. But if you do need it, this is a time when, if needs be, then just ask because no one's judging no one's and that goes whether it's mental health hunger just want to hug speak up yes, <laughs> do speak up totally abs absolutely agree it's so important i think as human beings we need we need that connection we need that that compassion that if someone's doing well we want to obviously encourage them to do well and if someone's not doing so well to try to help them and pick them up even if it's a smile or a hug or listen to their situation or even if it's to give something you know a euro or like you said a hug or five minutes of your time it can really be a huge difference in someone's life undoubtedly when you obviously as fitness coach always looking amazing that takes practice it takes yeah. um doing it not just once and i imagine mental health and having a good attitude is similar you can't just like hope for it to be there it's like okay look, you have to work on it sometimes yeah. you no know, to get that positivity to stick <laughs> no ab absolutely it totally is you know i think to myself because we live in spain i mean we're quite blessed we know the summer is coming so when, when we have nice weather i think that makes a huge I mean, difference haven't we all smile so much more the days oh my god the rainy days are nice it's but it's beautiful. like suddenly the energy that one gets yeah. on, the, on the sunny uh, well days. actually being irish as you mentioned earlier i actually quite like the rain so so when the rain comes, I want to make homemade vegetable soups and light the fire and stay in and get cozy with my pajamas. Wellies and on watch. and jumping in puzzles love, was a good that's one. one of my favourite things. That was a good one on Sunday morning. You know, my, morning. my boyfriend <laughs> bought me a lovely pair of wellies for Christmas. That was my Christmas present, a pair of wellies boots, one of my presents. And every time I walk with my dog, I love jumping in puddles. So I think you have to enjoy everything. We need the rain, we need to fill the reservoirs and we need it for the plants and so everything is, is like four seasons, we need rain and we need sunshine. But as regards mental health, yeah, weather obviously helps, but I think having a, being around positive, good people and being around friends and being honest if you're having a bad day, you know, it's okay not to be okay. And to say, look, I'm having a really bad day, this is what's happened, and to open up to somebody because, as we know, the, the suicide rates and the mental health issues have really shot through the roof during especially the pandemic times. And it's really sad to see that our brothers and sisters and our neighbours are struggling and too nervous to come out and admit that they're having issues. Um, but so I think when we open up and admit that it hasn't been easy for us in certain whatever way that could be, whether it's physically or mentally or financially or relationship wise with yourself or with others, then it gives the pe people the platform for them to be honest too. Exactly. It's like leading by example. It's not being yeah. shy. Like I'm always asking silly questions, but I really sometimes yeah. just don't know the answers. Most people be like too embarrassed to admit they don't know, but it's like, I don't know and I want to know. There's nothing wrong with not knowing everything. Well, nobody knows everything. Nobody no. does. And any of those who think they do, then eh, that's the moment to, exactly. to get worried. I know I would like to know. You oh, are always joyous. Me. You bounced <laughs> in here today again saying, oh, and I've had such a good day. What yes. is your day-to-day -day like? Oh, my God. You want me to tell the absolute truth? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> After what we just said. Yes, of course I will. Of course less? I will. Okay. Um, because this does involve vaginas. Okay, I want to actually talk about your vagina. Yes, please do. That's why I asked. But <laughs> if we're going to go, we can uh, touch on it now. Because oh, please don't touch it, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're going to come back and talk about vaginas after the break. But before we go to the break, I have one more question <laughs> I want to ask you because you are a... A health coach yes and you also recommend the vitamin b shots and things like that so i just wanted to touch on a bit of your profession oh okay because you're always very good at promoting everybody else and supporting everybody else oh, how can you. we support you what do oh, you do tell us a bit darling. about you thank you so much well 
my profession is actually just helping people in whatever way they need it to be. You know, I, I love people and I really love connecting with people, whether it's exercising, whether it's yoga, whether it's meditation, whether it's helping them with their nutrition, whether it's... Um, visiting schools to talk to kids. Visiting so. schools to talk to kids. And as you know, I, I worked in a private school here for many years and I, I, um, I worked in the sports department. So I delivered GCSE and recreational PE. So obviously I love sport. That's why I'm wearing the sporty clothes, as you can see. Um, and basically, but you know, for me, when I was in Dublin, I actually studied, I did, I did a degree in sports management and I used to manage sports centres. And then I realised it's not really my type of thing sitting at home, sorry, sitting in my office in the computer. I wanted to be with more with people. I get bored a little bit easily. So I do many different things, you know. I teach yoga classes, I teach Motown dance classes. I can't wait to be able to Yes, you have to come with so much fun. Well, I know you're, you're, a really good, you're a really good dancer. I've seen you many a time dancing. You're a pretty good shaker. I do remember. think it's fun. I do like to have You know, I'm, I'm, I'm big into spirituality and self-development and I run workshops and and uh, like day retreats for women to empower them um, and do everything like that. Everything got to do with vitamins and nutrition and, and yeah, everything got to do with mental health and wellness. Well, you obviously um, practice what you preach because you're, I can only think of one time and mm. I don't know how many years that I've seen you with a bad day that was kind of maybe getting to you. But even then, you always seem to carry it through with such positivity, such mm. joy. So if anyone is feeling in doubt, without a doubt, Audrey Spearing is for you. Now, don't go away. We are going to a break. And when we come back, we will be talking about vaginas. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just get lost in the moment without a care in the world. However, if something does come up and you find you're actually lost, it's also nice to know that you can call Linear Director to come and find you. Call Linear Director on 952 14 78 34 to see how they can better your life too. When I'm the designated driver, I think it's only fair that I get to choose a Zero Hero venue that rewards me with free soft drinks. My friends all get to choose and booze, and they feel safe going home with me. Make sure that you get your reward for being the designated driver. Why pay if you don't have to? Hi guys, Ross here from Hoganstown. Proud to be a member of the Zero Hero campaign. And, uh, we recommend everybody. Nobody drives drinking. Everybody who drives a car doesn't have any alcohol in their system. And we're proud to sponsor Zero Hero Program. I will welcome Zero Heroes. Come and visit us. GYN is happy to be Zero Hero partner. How cool is that? <laughs> GY. Thank you. Clara okay. are proud to present Zero to Hero. Never drink and drive. Mike Moses is proud to be a Zero Hero partner. Out of bounds, Zero Hero partners. Here we are, sticker going on. Delighted to welcome everybody and to be part of the Zero Hero campaign. Delighted. Zero Hero, welcome here. Here, are and they now to in our rooms. Welcome to Lemongrass, Doña Lola. Thank you very much. Zero Hero, welcome to Portofino, Cabo Pino. Welcome back to the show. If you missed the first half, I'm chatting with Audrey Spearing. She is just such a capable young lady, does everything to help everybody else. And her business actually depends on all that help that she gives on, but she never charges for it. How do you live? Because you're always 
volunteering. Can people actually book courses where they say, I want to have you as a personal trainer? Absolutely. Yoga Mondays, meditation Tuesdays, yes. gym Wednesdays, that kind of thing. Totally. Because I, you specialise mm. in so many things. Yeah, so many things. Well, I actually teach a yoga class in my house every Tuesday from 10 o'clock. And then on Fridays, I teach Motown and Tony. And then I train people in the gym, like to private clients. And I'm also a massage therapist, lymphatic drainage and sports massage. And I give vitamin, vitamin B12 injections. And I do, I do many different things, really. You know, so I, just, I just love life, actually. And I, I love volunteering, too. I think it's important to give back if we have the time to do that. Wonderful. Yeah. It's really nice. And it shows because, obviously, you do feel that you rewarded from it. And you've got a nice circle of friends. Beautiful. And that's really nice. And I know also a group of your friends, we did promise we're going to talk about about vaginas actually go <laughs> I've started going to a group together that is for toning wombs and vaginas is this correct this is correct I've said it correctly you actually have it sounds very good I remember as a little girl my mum would always say when you're peeing hold it because when you're older you'll be very grateful that you did that <laughs> absolutely and I never really and then I read a book years ago and it had Monsieur Coquelli caught I was in Brazil mm -hmm. and I read it in the same thing the girl was, was well talking about the controlling of certain all you know organs that can be beneficial Abs not just for peeing no or absolutely not peeing yourself well, when you're older. well actually while we're speaking here I, I'm actually doing the exercises as we talk because we're multitasking <laughs> okay so explain are you okay. uh, wearing so, something yes I <laughs> am I am so what happens is it's basically this is lovely Russian lady and in Russia I don't know if you know in Moscow especially, they have clinics all over uh, Moscow to teach ladies how to strengthen their womb and their vagina for two reasons. A, for women's health. So when you got older, you haven't got issues like that. So you don't need some tissues for your issues. Um, you know, so basically for women's health, for incontinence, for things like that, and also for sexual reasons as well. So I have a friend of mine who's Russian. Um, I don't think she might me mention her name, Masha, and I said, what's new? And she said, oh, I'm doing these classes. And she explained to me, and I said, oh, why am I not doing it? And she says, well, it's all in Russian. It's a Russian thing. And I says, well, can you not translate it? So she said, sure. So we got a, this is about five years ago, actually. So we got a group of our friends together, bought the equipment, and basically the equipment is... Um, it was actually um, made I think in the 1950s by a structural engineer. So it kind of goes inside, obviously. And it has a gauge where, with numbers on it, like a thermometer would have, or a gauge. And it has a pump. So the teacher might say to you, okay, pump it up to 120, hold, let's, move, let's do this, let's walk around the room, doing different positions, like yoga positions, and doing different necks. So it's basically a workout for your vagina. Now, did that surprise you as someone who has dedicated her life basically to keeping in shape, keeping it all in tone? Was that something like, well, yeah, I forgot about those muscles. Well, absolutely, because mostly we work on the outside muscles, you know, how we see, but obviously the inside muscle, they're mus it's muscular too. So when I've heard it, it made so much sense to me. I said, oh my goodness, why do women not know about this, these things? Because it's so important, you know, to protect against cervical cancer and problems with the womb or ladies who maybe can't get pregnant or ladies who have well, issues after pregnancy. I think it's really good to keep your health in this area, pelvic area. No, I'm thinking even for giving birth, if those muscles down there are trained, you can whoop that you thing out You can whoop that there. baby out. Push, push that baby push out. <laughs> push it out, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it's fantastic. So we do it every Wednesday. We have a class every Wednesday, and I've been doing it for the last five years um, every Wednesday, and it's so much fun. You can imagine the jokes in I the mean, class. It, exactly. I mean, it just lends... <laughs> it's relentless. The imagination can it's go a family wild. show, so we won't go into the detail. It's so much fun. Like nobody sees anything you're wearing. Like actually, I was wearing these clothes today. You just go into the bathroom, put insert the equipment, and then you're in your tracksuit with the teacher. So nobody sees anything like that, any intimate parts. And it's really, really fun. But you can see how much you're progressing because obviously with the gauge, you can see how strong you're getting by where the the the, the resistance. The, the, the resistance. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's just so cute. It's so cute. I mean, it's just, and it's, it should be something that is talked about in yes. the sense of, you know, we're talking about mental health, physical health. It is part of it. And who wants to wet themselves when they're sneezing? I mean, oh, when you're what, laughing, you know. When you're laughing. It means, I mean, if you wet yourself when you're laughing, it means that you're laughing at something really funny. So I see that as a good thing. <laughs> well, your Irish, I yeah. think, aspect definitely plays yeah. a big aspect in your personality. Yes. You always say, oh, no, you can ask me anything or talk about anything. I'm Irish. Is that what it means to you to be Irish? What does it mean for Audrey Spitting to be Irish? Because I know it's so proud, but it's more than just 
four leaf clover which you oh. obviously found and the, <laughs> yeah, the heritage yeah. what is it what do you feel as you know what Irish? nicole i'm really happy to be irish i really am and the reason being is because in irish people in general they have a fantastic sense of humor they love having fun they don't take themselves too seriously they don't take anyone else too seriously and they go through life when they're honest and they have they have trust and they have integrity and they always see the good side i think in ireland it rains so much the weather is so bad that we tend to have a sense of humor we can go it's raining again and that's why people we like to sing and dance and be joyful and have fun and always put a positive twist to something so i think it really helps and my mum was irish and my dad obviously and their parents before them so i grew up in an environment my, my mum's name is mary and we call her mary poppins because that's what she's like, always singing and dancing and laughing and seeing the funny side in life. So when you grow up in Ireland with people like that, it's, ing it's like ingrained inside of your DNA to be Just happy to be a and nice, to happy be person. Joyful. Listen, it doesn't mean I don't have a bad day. I don't want to say, oh, look, Mrs. Positive. You know, life sometimes can show you strange situations that you have to deal with. And of course, I've been hurt. And of course, things haven't gone well for me in certain areas in my life. But what can we do? We have to accept those things and then move on and, and, and make the best of what we have. And gratitude. Gratitude to be here, to be in Spain. I'm Irish, but I've chosen to live in, in sunny Marbella, which is amazing, you know. It is, with, to have that opportunity to be able to do that. Well, a lot of Brits will have lost now, having voted to leave. I'm really watching you. Yes. Not excited about that. <laughs> but it's nice because, as you say, you have a nice day every day. I'm really delighted yes. that on St. Patrick's Day, you've chosen to have that moment to be able to come and be on the programme. Back in Ireland, obviously a big day today. People travel all around the world to go to St. Patrick's back home yes yeah, st patrick's day is probably one of the biggest days in ireland apart from christmas so everyone goes to the pub and gets dressed up and has parties so yeah huge day huge yeah. fabulous well it's been a huge day for me having you on the program and how about that you get to hear about not only that you can do motown class mm -hmm. you can do yoga classes you can have private massages and therapy meditation and also you can find out about those womb and vagina toning <laughs> classes sounds like fun <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you so much. Happy St. Patrick's happy Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Is there Day. anything special to say apart from happy St. Patrick's Day? No, just happy. Just uh, go and have the crack. They say in Ireland, the crack means fun. Go and have the crack. Go and have the Go crack. and have the crack. Go and have the crack. Yasta <laughs> manana. We'll be back tomorrow with more. Thanks for joining us. Take care. We can change if we try.